Love, hello everybody. Today, what I wanted to talk to you about was automatic drawing, not painting. Well, automatic painting is part of it too. And I want to show you something that I did. So what I mean by automatic drawing and, and painting, I'm going to just go ahead and flip. You've, you're done seeing my face now? These were, these were, I'd pick a palette and then I'd test out the palette by not overthinking, and this is cheap copy paper because if you do this on special paper, then you're gonna feel like you need to make a masterpiece. But the idea of doing an automatic drawing or automatic painting or color studies, whatever you wanna call them, is that you get to play around with ideas without consequence. And you start feeling that looseness. So if you ever feel like you are stuck and you don't know how to loosen up, then this little demo that I'm showing you today would be a really good way to loosen up. I've got all different kinds of colors, like I'm still limited palette. There's a really pretty one. I love that olive green with the pale pink. But these are, this was how I kind of got my hand used to making more gestural marks. And from here is probably when I started making more um, abstract florals. So I'm going to put these to the side. I'm going to have to like pin them all up. I have cheap paper. Get yourself some cheap, cheap, cheap paper. Um, this is just a color palette so I can put my paints on it. I'm going to use fluid paints today because if we use heavy body, it won't be fast enough. So if all you have is heavy body, add water to it. So this is graphite, um, water soluble graphite. I'm going to use the softer one, like a 2B. This is Lyra brand, L-Y-R-A. That's great. These are my favorite. Everyone knows I use these oil pastels all the time. Of course, I've got my favorite brushes. This is really fun here. This is a good choice too. And my cute little old bay. These are Woodies. If you have never heard of Woodies before, I highly, they're, they're by the brand um, Stabilo, S-T-A-B-I-L-O. So um, I'm going to pick a couple of colors and we'll just go at it. Alizarin Crimson. I don't even use Alizarin Crimson in a while. That's a nice dark red. Whatever's left of this, I need to use up this Hansa Yellow Medium. This is going to make a warm palette. I love this Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a gorgeous blue. It's a really, really dark blue. I think I'm just going to use, this is my favorite white. This is Liquitex Professional Gesso. If you have like printer paper that you're going to throw away or scrap paper or or any kind of like stuff that's going in the trash, use that as well to try this. You can save those scraps then to use as collage in your work later. Um, I'm going to just start with some scribbles. So this is part of that automatic. So this paper doesn't have any tooth. It's really smooth paper because it's like a printer paper. So I'm going to dip that in water and see how that goes. Look at that. So see how your hand goes and, and what kind of marks you're going to make. And then come in. We want to mix up. We get some yellow on that. We'll make it kind of a greenish color. That is very bright. And then we can get in here with this and see. Do we like it? It's different. There we go. That's such a gorgeous color. I'm going to use a different brush for the blue so that I'm not like mixing them. There we go. There. I only gave it a couple of minutes. I'm going to put it to the side. I'm going to make this yellow warmer. So this time I'm going to just start with this. Look at how gorgeous that yellow is. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come in here with... Here, you wanted teal? This is fun. How about this? Automatic. And I'm going to do some of that blue. But I'm not... Do you see how I'm not covering the whole page? I'm not trying to blend or mix. I'm just seeing what happens compositionally, what my eye does. There we go. Stop. I'm going to put that to the side. What's the next thing we want to do? Let's start with that big brush this time. We are automatic painting. They're like little color studies and this is how you loosen up. It's just like whatever's the first thing your eye says to try, that's what you need to do. And then you stop. You give yourself maybe two minutes is about how much I'm doing for each of these. Set it to the side. Start again. I'm going to just see what's left in here. It's got this kind of cool purplish pink. I'm going to get a lot of white. So then we have this gray. And I'm going to come in with this yellow. I love yellow and this purplish gray together. So I've done just a little bit of color there and I want some mark making. Let's just get in here with this oil pastel. And it's going to kind of cut through the wet paint. 
and I'm just making a few marks as I go. How about something dark? I am still looking at composition. Can you tell that like that's becoming more automatic? So when you do it, you're starting to pick colors automatic. You're starting to make marks with your hand automatically. It's a really fun way to loosen up. So if you have a hard time loosening up and you don't know how to make more abstract, free form artwork, this is what you do and you get going. I want more of that yellow, but I'm all out. Here's another color that's an old color. I don't know if they make it or not. It's a warm yellow. I used to use it all the time. I do love, I love warm yellows the most. This is a good way to give yourself some ideas for like larger paintings. You can say what worked, what didn't work, what combinations are fascinating to me right now. Now look, we can make a little bit of green. I've got three primary I've got the three primaries a, a yellow red and blue and they're all just very dark and that is a key so how do you save it I don't I know how I could save it here a little bit of water so I can spread that all right and now I want to I want that color green so I'm matching it with these oil pastels and then I'm gonna right now I want a really nice pink pinkish there we go now watch how this color just when we come in because the pink is complementary to um, the green. So now we have this really cool, and I'm running out of paint there, so we need more white. I'm just gonna leave this here. Maybe we need some scribbles, because it's pulling up what's underneath, and that's why it's really cool. All right, I'm gonna stop there because that's been way longer than the rest of the pieces, so I'm just gonna use what's on my, there we go. We go whatever I was doing last, of just having a few supplies ready to go three colors plus white how about we do something crazy I have this cool little tool if you've ever seen these these are for splatter and I got black black oh no maybe that wasn't black maybe that's Van Dyke brown but it looks like black there you go so I've got just I've just made it soupy over here see soupy and then you can there you go well, these are super cheap papers so you really don't want to go too many more layers than that and then because I have this nice dark thing going on I'm gonna just play with that mark there it's amazing how many different colors you can make with this right I'm gonna get more of this blue Payne's gray that makes this beautiful blue color and my hand loves to make this motion so let's see if I can make my hand do a different motion now now I'm going to come in with some white. It needs some scratchy scratchy marks of another color. So which color with this light blue, opposite of blue is orange. Sure, why not? I don't know exactly what I'm doing. You guys understand the idea of automatic as I have no plan and I just have to think quick what my, what my brain says it wants to do. And when you do that, that's how you start loosening up and making decisions really, really quickly. But when I really want to go through the paint, I've got the oil pastel. Looks like fire and water. Whatever it is, it is. I'm putting it to the side. And I have one more. We'll do a little teal. So what would go great with teal? Like kind of a rusty pink. Let's see, what brush could I use that would be different? Have you ever used a baster? Um, so I'm gonna mix a little bit to make this kind of peachy color peachy pink there it is I'm making a nice mess for you guys so now I have this ridiculous thing for painting with the whole point is is to loosen yourself up you've gotta like allow yourself to experiment with things that you wouldn't have expected to experiment look at how pretty those colors are isn't that so gorge think of this you know very well loved and known southwest colors which is always like the very warm colors with teal I feel like it needs another color what am I gonna do like an actual orange maybe red oh yeah look at how cool that looks start taking a look. That one's still dripping. 
automatic painting and drawing to loosen you up. I want to see everyone posting their automatic drawings today. And don't go for longer than about two to three minutes on each of them because if you go longer than that then you're overthinking. So what are, what are we discovering something like this? Those colors are great. Limit your palette and then try to have a dominating color in it. Well, look at that. There's some, some contrast in darks and lights. We've got this pink and green which is gorgeous and all oh, these fun marks. Is every single one going to turn out great? No, because I don't even really love this one, but it was fun. I got some good colors there. This one was gorgeous. This is one of those. I think I painted it this way, but it doesn't really matter. That one's like, oh my goodness. There are certain things that you learn with time and painting, which is composition, color, and design. So in the automatic phase, what's happening is, is all of those things that I've been learning. I'm standing up higher so that we can talk and see. All those things that I've been learning for so long now are becoming automatic and now the automatic phase is for me to just let it out. After you've done something long enough you start understanding all the color composition and design and maybe these first ones might turn out like a hot mess for you but if you did a hundred of them and then you did a hundred more I promise you it's just time. It's just time that you put into it there's no way to not be good. The point though is that they have to be automatic. They can't be pre-planned. Just pull out a few supplies and limit yourself to two to three minutes for each of them and do it on copy paper like cheap cheap printer paper. That's it. So that it's gonna bleed through. And if you're like, but what do I do with all of it when I'm done? Throw it out. You get to make art that you can throw out or use as collage material. I don't want you to think of these as anything more important than that. Okay? Is that a deal? I also know in order to get to that point where I have something of value, I have to make a lot of shit first. You just do. In fact, I have, a, I have a garbage can full of garbage right now that's all artwork that I've torn up. And you know what? It's so freeing to be able to make work that you don't care about, alright? Have a great weekend!